Hi everyone, welcome back to NG. I think we can just go to sleep? Or is it the next day? Go to bed. I sure hope we get news tomorrow that uh, Kaoru is fine. Hazuki. As I lie down and close my eyes, I can't help thinking about Maruhashi. Maruchan, no! I hadn't known him long, but the guy did have some good qualities. If nothing else, he had guts. Regrets can't help me undo anything. I'm not all-powerful. The only thing I can do for him now is put a hit out on his case. Hmm. On this case. I don't get a wink of sleep last night. Wait, I didn't? Did it say I don't? Game of death. I'm a Nome Hazuki. Finn. Who's Finn? <laughs> sure, I'll save again. Um, let's go over this one. The ninth. It's early, that's why I sound and look a little bit sleepy. <laughs> My head is full of fuzz the next morning. Sun is bright and shining, but all I can think about is Marahashi's last moments. He should have listened, man. He should have be careful and not open the well. I should check the situation in Kintoki, but I can't muster a shred of energy to get up. Staying up all night has left me exhausted. Can't say the shock has faded either. It's not the best idea, but I stay in bed until evening rolls around. Damn. That's kind of nice. <clears throat> the events of last night pop into my head over and over when I least expect it. I can't count how many times now. Someone I know fell victim as a result of going after spirits. Damn it. It's no question that this is all Kakuya's fault. But I'm the one who keeps dragging everyone into this mess. What could I have done? This is the result of working with Amanome and Hazuki. But if I don't tell anyone, I won't have any resources to help save Ami. Whatever I choose, someone dies. No neatly wrapped up comic book happy ending where everyone's saved here. Is that a jab at Deathmark? Because we saved everyone. When Ami disappeared, I decided to stop at nothing while going after Kakuya. But coming face to face with a person's death like this, my, determin my determination wavers. My heart is slowly being shredded to pieces from the horrible dilemma I find myself in. Amanome. Hey, Gabu. Sorry for all the trouble last night. It's nothing. How's your leg? Oh, practically a scratch. I'll be completely recovered in a week. No big deal. What about Marahashi? Well, he's still dead. They found his body. The cops are pressing for details with the higher-ups. As a result, the office has been in an uproar since noon. You alright? Is that a concern I hear? Well, Pops obviously grilled me for answers, asking if I knew anything about it. But it's not like he'd believe me if I mentioned Kubitaro. So I played it off like the smooth talker I am. I see. But there's still a problem. Because of this mess, Pops is suspending me. Maruhashi'd been under my wing, so this is a supervisory liability matter. Oh shit. Amanome's voice while he talks is calm and matter-of-fact, as usual. But all I hear is how he's desperately restraining his emotions. I keep trying to break out of the house, but security is tight. No success yet. Aw oh, man. I want to help you so I can avenge Maruhashi, but I don't think I can move for a while. Sorry, Gabu. Don't worry about it. I'm used to being alone. Is this you trying to be considerate? Yes, it is. Oh, by the way, I did get Hazuki safely admitted to the hospital. Though with her being Miss Famous Occult Idol, I had to talk, f I had to fast talk explaining our relationship. How is she doing? A little injured, but it's not the to the extent of mine. Her wounds will heal, but... What do you mean by that? She won't wake up. Ah, fuck. She hasn't regained consciousness. She's completely comatose. I tried to get answers from the doctor, but he claims she should have woken up already. They don't know what caused it. Kakuya. How could this? Wait, Kakuya said something before the lightning strike. Yeah, she's doing this. Fuck. Kakuya thought of a fun game. Seiji or Kaoru? Which one is more important? Kakuya wants to know. She made me choose and the other one's in a coma. Is this all her doing? Hopefully she'll make a full recovery soon. Yeah. So she's pretty much in a coma until the end of the game. 
Looks like Pop's coming. I'm gonna hang up. Hunker down for a while and get some rest. Oh, that's nice of me. Hey, Gabu. You feel responsible for what happened to Marahashi and Hazuki, don't you? You're probably afraid to get anyone else you know involved any further, right? Thought so. I chose to help you on my own. I take full responsibility for anything that happened to me. You don't need to carry that for me. You're just sticking your nose in where you don't have to. <laughs> I'm a no me, you. You darling, you. Don't put it all on yourself, okay? Later, man. He's such a good friend. Phone call cuts off abruptly. I'm a no me. Saying his name out loud settles something in, in me. I've known him for a long time now, but I never considered relying on him as much as I do now. I gotta pull myself together. My chest beats with my newfound resolve. Right when I get off the phone, why am I suddenly so popular? Who is it? Check the peephole. That's me? Oh, the cop. What's her name again? Oe. Dana Oe. Yeah. There you are. Sorry about coming by so late, Gabu. Is this about Ami again? I already told you guys everything I know. That's not my reason for coming today. I'm here to ask you about something else. She's so fucking sexy in some way. There was a murder in Kintoki last night. The victim was one Mitsuru Marahashi, a member of the Amanome family. You know anything about it? No. I don't have a TV and I don't read the paper. First I've heard of it. Damn, I'm so smooth! Why are you asking me? I've already confirmed that you are acquainted with the deceased through Amanome. You've also been wandering around Kintoki lately. There's no use trying to deny it. Weren't you the one who skipped out on questioning two days before the incident? Going by your face, I'm right. I suspected it was you from the description, and it seems I hit the nail on the head. So why were you snooping around Kintoki? <clears throat> um, this is partly right. I wonder if it's like if we choose for an answer that has like a little bit of truth in it, she will like it. So you were interested in that. Mind if I ask why? I don't need to tell you. This is an invasion of my privacy. You're quite unco un uncooperative, kid. That's a hard word for me. <laughs> hey, I opened my door for you. That's plenty cooperative. Anyways, are we done here? I want to go to sleep. Fine, I'll take my leave for now. Oh, and for your information, I'm the only one who's connected you to that questioning. I haven't submitted a report on it yet, so you won't be subject to other officers coming by. So this is all just you going on a hunch and suspecting me. Don't get the wrong idea, I'm not interested in you. The spiriting away of Ami and the dog killings in Kintoki. You just happen to be involved in the cases I take interest in. Anyway, see ya. See ya! Wouldn't wanna be ya! Always footsteps fade away. That detective. For some reason she's fixated on cases involving ghosts. There are some strange detectives out there. It kind of sucks that only I have the curse. Like the mouth thing. Because with Deathmark, it was like anyone who comes into contact with the ghost can get cursed. And that's how Mashta became our buddy. Because he had the same thing, so he had to believe it. Um, I kind of wish that she would do the same. She would get cursed as well and then be, be forced to become our team member. Maybe it's relief at squeaking out of a sticky situation, but I'm suddenly sleepy. I could fall asleep on my feet right now. Huh? Well, guess we can go sleep then. I wonder what the next ghost is gonna be. I thought the... Kin uh, Kintoki one, uh, Kubitaro, was a little bit like... Mm. It was a good story, like you feel bad for her, but... It was over really quickly, we didn't really have to do much. Um, the... fuck, what's her name? I just can't leave this... I can't just leave this... I keep... I can't say... I can't say the sentence. Whatever. Time to take care of it so I can move on. Um, because I'm trying to think of her name. What was it? Something on the... Urashima Onna? Yeah, she was really cool and we had to like go around and do the turtle things. I was a lot more hands-on. 
literally. I wake up feeling much better. Sleeping past noon probably helped. But then again, like the bride in Deathmark also was a really short chapter, so. I think some chapters are just shorter. Guess anger and sadness fade with time. The shock and disbelief are still there, though. Those have definitely not disappeared. I keep flashing back to the scene of death I'd seen, and my sight grows dim. Nothing happens today, and soon night falls. I still haven't heard the sound of Kakuya's flute. Yeah, I'm expecting to be called again. That should work. Take a breath. Sorry, I take a breather after hiding Amonomi's modified gun in the back of my closet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Whew. I'm just inviting problems if I carry it around. Only he can use it anyway. Besides, weapons aren't my thing. Yeah, just fucking hide it and keep it there. <clears throat> Until he comes by to pick it up. Or a number I don't recognize. Is it D-Man? Ah, Ban! Naomasa Banda. That Amonome boy told me to can contact you from now on. Come to Shinza Station right now. Same place as last time is fine, alright? What do you want? He hangs up without answering. How do I manage to surround myself with all these self-centered guys? <laughs> cool. Is Bonnie gonna be our new partner for now? It'll be faster to get to Shinza Station if I take my bike. The ride might improve my mood too. Ugh, sorry. I'm still so sick. It's not getting any better. Climbing on my bike, I head towards the station. Rosé? Maybe because it's late, but there aren't many people around the walkway. Same like last time, right? Looking around, I spot Ban smoking and staring into the night sky beyond the handrail. Blocking part of his sky view is Moon Tower. Such a big building. You finally made it. I was getting tired of waiting. What happened with Kubitaro of Kintoki? Did you break your curse? Yeah, we defeated Kubitaro. As you can see, I managed to survive. But... Sounds like a lot went down. You promised to tell me anything you know, don't forget. I'll hear you out, so tell me. Uh, I need to blow my nose again. Uh, oh shit. No, don't put it on auto. Van quietly listens as I talk. Every once in a while he jots down a note. One sec. Uh, okay. I see. I'm impressed, honestly. Urashima woman and Kubitaro. Amateur like you took down two spirits. You might be more remarkable than I first thought. Van appears to be appraising me. It makes my skin crawl. I like him, though. Your turn, old man. You said you'd investigate Kakuya. Find out anything? Oh yeah, right. I asked an acquaintance who's familiar with ghosts about it. About Kakuya's game. Kakuya's game? A doll-like girl calling herself Kakuya appears and sucks people into her peculiar game. With no other details, people resorted to calling it Kakuya's game. The game is what you've gotten yourself mixed up in right now. So you're saying there were other people who got mixed up in this game, not just me. Ah, uh, obviously. Because it was Ami before you and then Yuri before her. For whatever reason, Kakuya appears every 10 years. Oh, and every time the body count of missing and dead is high, even restricted to only confirmed. Do the victims have anything in common? Age and gender doesn't seem to matter. However, it seems everyone receives a black postcard right before becoming involved. So maybe maybe it's an actual person handing out these black postcards and targeting people that way. And then Kakuya comes and like follows that. Postcard was outside my apartment. Le Bamets Pole. What was it again? So that was mine and Ami's invitation. From the look on your face, you know something. Yeah. Has anyone survived playing Kakia's game? Nah, no one. Kakia keeps playing until her opponent loses. There's no way to survive it. The loser's fate is always tragic. Missing, vegetative coma, insanity, death. No one returns to normal life completely okay. Ugh, so blunt. No point in showing consideration to guys. 
What, you want me to be gentle with you? Uh, no. Don't get so angry. I'm not keen on babysitting either. Oh, almost forgot. You're free in the evening two nights from now, Governor. My acquaintance is stopping by your mom's bar that night. Got it? Good. Wait, who's that? Hey, just hold up. Why the hell do I need to meet with this person you know? Don't look so displeased. It's a young woman and her face isn't bad. Her personality, on the other hand. Wait, is it Oe? She knows a lot about ghost-related things. She's the one who told me about Kakuya's game. I'm sure you'll hear some interesting things from her. What if it's Oe? That would be cool. Sounds like she'll be a better source of info than you. Fine, I'll make sure, I'll make sure I have time. Never short on a comeback, I see. By the way, Gabu, got any money on you? <laughs> what? A little, I guess. Sorry, but could you lend me some? I know the UG match paid you pretty well. 10,000 yen will do. That's like a hundred bucks. I'm good on paying you back next time. Sorting money from a high schooler at your age? Forget it, old man. No way I'm giving you money for no reason. I see. Guess I'll just give you one then. Information and referral fee, 10,000 yen. I think that's pretty reasonable, though I'm willing to drop it to 5,000. That's a steal. 50 bucks is pretty good, yeah. I just want to get rid of him at this point, so I give him the 5,000 yen. He's going to be helping me from here on out, so I'd say that's not bad of a deal, considering. Heh, <laughs> thanks. Good luck when you meet her. Waving his hand, Bun walks down the stairs. And directly into a pachinko parlor open late. <laughs> what a bum. He just goes gambling. <laughs> With the 50 bucks. I climb on my bike and drive full throttle down the expressway. The road's empty at midnight. <clears throat> at home, I devour the hamburger meal I bought on my way back. This has become my staple diet. <laughs> I can't find a desire or energy to cook for myself while all this is going on. I get that. When I'm full, I decide to go to bed. Okay. Next day, I guess. We're gonna meet up with Oi. Collapsing on the bed, I shut my eyes. I feel like Kakia is happening before before the meetup. That journalist guy, Bun, suddenly comes to mind. He's got an uncanny knack for getting info on spirits. But man, he's definitely shady. God, I'm so out of breath. <sighs> Yes, I'll save. Oh, tonight's at pass. Okay, so we're meeting up immediately. Tonight I'm supposed to meet with the ghost expert lady. I decided to get to the Black Rabbit ahead of schedule. I wonder who it is. I duck into the underpass. A chill chilly breeze is blowing. I feel tension in the air again. Is she coming? Ah, fuck. Familiar melody echoes down the alley. <laughs> Such an annoying anime laugh. <laughs> Good evening, mister. Suddenly, Kakuya appears before me. She seems so tiny. The air freezes with suspense. I struggle for breath. You're amazing, mister. You beat Kubitaro of Kintoki. I didn't beat anything. Because of you, Maruhashi is. And that lightning strike. Was that because of you too? Aha, uh -huh, that was so fun. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> didn't it get your heart pounding? Hazuki's coma. Don't tell me that you. It's boring if no one disappears. Don't you think it's more fun like that? <clears throat> Damn it. Are you annoyed? Do you want to quit? But mister, you have to, to play with Kakuya. I wonder what she says for mister. Maybe it's just like Oji-san. We'll play forever and ever. I'm stuck, completely helpless. I realize I've been biting my lip. The foul taste of iron spreads through my mouth. I thought of the next game already. It's a screaming author game. Oh, yeah. 
If you don't play, you'll disappear too. And Ami will never come back. The screaming author. Kakuya, tell me. What's NG? Hey, Kakuya, what's NG? I heard Ami mention it in my vision. She just disappears. A wind blows and Kakuya suddenly vanishes. I wonder if she's connected to the Deathmark doll in any way. Where the hell did she go? Could it be the Deathmark doll but dressed up? I carefully look around my surroundings, checking the shadows under the pillars and shutters. But Kakuya is nowhere to be found. Oh shit! Whoa, she's right here. NG, me and daddy's secret. If you learn the secret, I'll have no choice but to... Kill you. Korosuzo. Me and daddy's secret, huh? Kakuya vanishes again. I feel like I've been stabbed in the heart. That burning hatred she was aiming at me. She's never acted like that before. Yeah, you got something with NG there. That might be the key to figure out what Kakuya's deal is. <clears throat> Screaming author. Even if I defeat this one, the next game will start. Will still start. The keyword is NG. Ami mentioned it. Is there a chance to get the jump on Kakuya somehow? Hmm. Probably. <laughs> when I get to the Black Rabbit, the lights are already on. On Natsumi in sight? Is not on. on. I, keep sp I keep skipping the first word. You're late. I've gotten tired of waiting. Oh, it's not the cop lady. Aww. The woman is sitting at the bar, nursing a drink. Slowly, she stands up. Nice outfit, though. I've never seen her before. No sign of Aunt Natsumi. This lady must have snuck in somehow, but... She can't be. I was bored out of my mind, so I helped myself to a drink. Relax, relax. I'll pay for it. I might not... Kotow? This to society's norms, but I draw the line at stealing top-shelf alcohol. Kotow? I've never seen that word before. Then you should drop by the bar more often. This place is pretty much dead. I'm sure Aunt Natsumi would love a regular customer. I figured you'd be way more shocked. You got some backbone and a cool head on your shoulders. You deserve a prize. Bon said you had some nerves of steel. Bon said you had nerves of steel. Seems like you had your type nailed down. If you know Bon, then that means you're some kind of ghost expert lady? That plebeian has no talent for delivering a proper introduction, does he? C'est la vie. I suppose I shall do the honors myself then. Doze. Okay, rosé. Doze, Mudan. Doze, Mudan? What kind of name is that? Not my real name, obviously. It's just my stage name. Though I may not- <laughs> And then Gabu's like, Gabu Gabu is my stage name. <laughs> Though I may not look the part, because I do not use a silk hat or a baton. Baton? <laughs> I'm a magician. Oh. Why is a magician know so much about ghosts? Isn't that more up a monk or a fortune teller's alley? You know, spiritual people? Let's just say my personal circumstances did not dictate my profession. More precisely, a lady who has supernatural s who was a supernatural savant chose to become a magician on the side. So you're just interested in the supernatural like a certain famous occult idol? Nah, I wouldn't say that. My interest is a little more serious. And if we get to know each other better, maybe I'll tell you all about it. Rosé narr narrows her eyes and smiles at me ominously. Suddenly, a sickly sweet scent hits my nose. Oh dear, are you put off by rose perfume? A little bit. Oh my, rose perfume is not to your liking? No. Now then, shall we get down to business? I'm super peculiar when it comes to perfume. I finally found a perfume that I like for myself. But it took me like years to find it. Bon told me about what you've been through. I'm sure you have plenty of questions. I'll answer your inquiries as best I can. So what would you like to know about? NG. I'm afraid I can't help you with that. Apparently it's a big deal to Kakuya. Is it now? I regret that I can't give you the answers you want, but I haven't the faintest idea. Sorry. Is there anything else you want to ask? Bun told me about Kakuya's game. The Kakuya doll forces humans she likes to play games with her. 
So it's not just me. Other people have been dragged into this. Did they all have to do stuff? the stuff I'm doing? Apparently the type of game is dependent on the target. Oh! Could be a game of marbles, cat's cradle, even hide and seek. Well, yeah, because Ami just had to put down the... the flowers. That sounds like a cakewalk. I guess a kid like you would say that you're playing in nightmare mode. Aha! Uh -huh, I just finished Alien Isolation on nightmare mode. She must really like you. Difficulty settings aside, the only thing that awaits in the end is despair. Because Kakuya keeps playing until her opponent loses. Is there anything else you want to ask? Spirits are manifestations of the souls of the departed who bear strong grudges. To banish the spirit from this world, you must learn about its past. I've picked up on that part already. Are there any other tricks that can help, like using talismans or scattering salt? Oh child, you read far too many comics. I would say you've seen far too many movies. If I had one piece of advice to give, hmm. I'd say the most important thing would be to try and empathize with the spirit. It may seem like a monster now, but it was once human. Like most humans with a grudge, they're typically typically lonely and desperate to be understood. I don't get it. I do. Simply put, there's no easy way to do it. That's me? Oh, Bon! Sorry I'm late, Gabu. Good work playing Q&A, Rosé. I read Q&A so quickly that I was like, wait, what did I just say? Drat, you actually showed up. Alone time with this cute boy was a much more appealing proposition. And I was just thinking about giving him an intensive private lecture too. <laughs> He's like a she's like a female Seiji. What a pity. Instead of like Seiji being into older ladies, this is older ladies into like younger boys. By the way, Gabu, thanks for last night. I found a slot with a nice little bonus game and fed it with the money you gave me. Hit my first jackpot in a long time. It was great. I lost it all the next day, but hey, gambling's all about the thrill. Yeah, that's gambling, all right. Lose all your money eventually. Are you telling me that you extorted money from a high schooler to feed your gambling addiction? Ho oh, there, extortion? Me? I did nothing of the sort. Quit assassinating my character. I just collected my fee for the work I did. I only charged him half price because he's a kid. Pretty much charity coming from me. Someone should have taught you this earlier. But a truly charitable adult would never approach, would have never broached the subject of money to a kid. By the way, you'd better not have squandered the funds I gave you for the investigation, too. Have you discovered anything at all about Yakumo Miroku? Yakumo Miroku? Yakumo is like a famous detective story, right? Detective Yakumo? Rome wasn't built in a day. I literally just started looking into it yesterday. I'm still in a pre-information gathering phase. I've just canvassed the neighborhood so far. But I heard some wild rumors I'd bet you like. People have been hearing screaming coming from the children's author Yakumo Miroku's mansion. Oh yeah, the author is called Yakumo? That's cool. Yakumo is like eight clouds. The characters for eight clouds. And it's like a... F There's like a big franchise around Detective Yakumo. And he's like a spiritual detective or something. That's what I know it from, but... Screaming from the house of a children's author. Can't be. Gabu, what's that look for? Hey old man, could you tell me more about that rumor? Can these two people be my partners please? That would be awesome. No sweat, kiddo. It's part of my report to Rose anyway. Doze. Mudan doze. There are odd rumors about the Miroku residence. They say that. Rumors of the screaming author. Title drop of this episode. <laughs> <coughs> Have you heard about the Miroku residence? You know that old mansion where Yakumo Miroko, Miroku, that children's author, lives all alone. For some reason I was kind of hoping it was the mansion from Deathmark. People have been hearing some weird screaming coming from that place lately. And not just once or twice, but every night. So Mrs. Y from the neighborhood went to complain. But that mansion doesn't have an intercom. So she had to go right up and knock on the door. She pounded on the door and nobody came out. The screaming didn't stop, so she kept coming back day after day, but no response. She was sure someone was inside, so she finally got fed up, opens the door, and threw something through the window to get the person inside to notice. Then suddenly, a light in the second floor window came on. And then she heard a faint voice. 
Please don't look inside. The voice kept pleading with her softly, over and over again. Please don't look inside. Please don't look inside. Please don't look inside. Please don't look, please don't look, please don't look. Don't look inside! Did she do it? Mrs. Y heard a scream and after that, they said she was tormented by constant screaming inside her head. She had a nervous breakdown and committed suicide. Damn. That's what the rumors say. It certainly sounds supernatural enough. I want to go into a spooky house. Let's go. The peeking taboo, the common canard in these supernatural stories. Someone pokes their nose in somewhere it doesn't belong and gets punished for it. Yep. The Crane's Wife's and Pandora's Box are famous examples. Crane's Wife? I don't know that one. Is this screamer that screaming author that Kakuya was talking about? Without realizing, I speak Kakuya's name out loud. Obviously, Ban and Rose aren't going to, to just let that go. Gabu, you met Kakuya? Oh, yeah, I hadn't told them. A little while ago. Why didn't you tell me? I thought I told you to tell me everything. Don't go frothing at the mouth, Ban. Pursuing spirits is deadly work. He was probably just worried about us. But you needn't bother, Gabu. Ban and myself have decided to hunt spirits for our own volition. We accept the consequences. So there's no need to hold back for our sakes. Tell us everything. I guess there's no dodging it. I tell them about the screaming author that Kakia told me about. I see, how fascinating. To think the screaming author could be hiding within the Miroku residence. You sound like you're enjoying this. Why are you looking into the Miroku residence? That's only for grown-ups to know. Once I figure out how trustworthy you are, maybe I'll fill you in. This lady's a walking bundle of secrets. She hasn't even told me why she was investigating Miroku. You may be an adult, but you're not trustworthy. <laughs> I much prefer younger men, not ones facing down a midlife crisis. So, did you uncover any other notable clues? I told you, this one is still early going. Info doesn't reveal, reveal itself that easily. I wanted to talk directly with Miroku, but the house has been empty for a long time. Probably off gathering materials for a new book. Empty, you say? It might be that Miroku's already dead. Yeah, of course. Otherwise he wouldn't be the screaming author ghost. Dead? As I told you earlier, spirits are born from the grudges of the dead. If we assume that Miroku has died and become a spirit, all the pieces fall into place, no? You're looking for the screaming author after all. Hey, don't jump to conclusions. I've, conf I've confirmed Miroku hasn't been reported dead. It wouldn't be uncommon for someone who lived alone to die without being noticed. We'll just have to go see for ourselves. Let's go! Hey, you can't just decide stuff like that. What are you even going to do there? Investigate, obviously. I'll leave my methods up to your imagination. A lady shouldn't ever have to stain her lips with such words. What, are you going to break in or something? Well, more or less. Whether he's dead or merely absent is the perfect opportunity to sneak inside. This is shaping up to be an amusing night. I'm coming with you. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself too. If you've encountered Kakia, then the clock on your death is already ticking down. You have no time to be taking it easy. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. They also say fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Really? That's cool. And curiosity killed the cat. We leave the black rabbit and head to the station. It's getting pretty late. Most stores are closed. Nighttime is the greatest time of day. I, I agree. I hate sunlight. I agree. The summer sun is particularly harsh. I don't really hate the sun though. I like it, but it, it should be... I like early summer in Europe. So it's like the sun is like enough to warm you up a little bit, but it doesn't like burn. If you're so scared of UV rays, you could try wearing something else. Come on, let's get to the Miroku place already. Hey, hold up. I don't know where the Miroku residence is. I kind of hate that remark that he just said. Like you should cover up more if you hate the sun that much. Because there's such a... There's um, How do you say? It's kind of a taboo in Japan to show your shoulders. Like bare shoulders. Like even though 
Like in the West, it's more about showing cleavage that's kind of taboo. Like not doesn't even really matter, but people would say like, man, she really showing her boobs. In Japan, they would say they they remark that you shouldn't show off your shoulders even. So even for like wearing a tank top like this, like I am now, I felt really conscious about not anymore, like not towards the later years. I couldn't give a fuck. But first couple years in Japan, I really was like, oh, man, I really want to just wear a tank top, but I can't. You feel so conscious because no one else is doing it. It's on the outskirts of Kisoji Temple. It's a bit of a hike from here. <clears throat> There's a station by the mansion, so I suggest taking a train. Bun gives me the address of the Minoko residence. It's in the same ward, so I pretty much I can pretty much imagine where it is just based on the address. We should meet up there later. We'll stand out if we show up there in a group. I have no objections with that plan. Were it just a young man, I'd feel otherwise. But I'll decline the stroll with the, with an old lek. Lek? Lech? That's an easy way to ruin a perfectly beautiful night. That's my line. Hard pass on walking around town with a woman trying that hard to turn heads. Meet at the front door in 30 minutes, okay? Bun and Rose go their separate ways as they head to the ticket gates. I better hustle too. Uh, freakish scream, go to complain, fairy tale author Yakumo Miroku, he lived by himself. Rose is a suspicious magician, sorry, I'm reading it out of order. Person pretending to not be there, through op through objects at window, second floor, though peek inside. Repeated screams inside head, nervous breakdown, suicide. Got it. <laughs> I didn't miss a thing. The address I'm going to is a train stop away. Luckily, I arrived before the last train. I reach the station without any issues. The classy residential area is full of cookie cutter homes and I quickly lose my way. I walk around aimlessly for a while until I arrive at the building I was looking for. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, you're here. Rose and Bon are already waiting at the residence. You're late. What the hell are you doing? We've only got a limited amount of time to search. Waste any more time and today will be useless. Limited? Why? This area has a, high, has a high rate of unusual incidents, but they only happen sporadically. Because of that history, the police have this area under priority patrol. Uh, it's always the cops. Seriously, that's a pain. We did some legwork and we have a rough idea of their patrol schedule. We're trying to limit our presence to when there's a gap in their patrols. So we need to get in, investigate as much of the place as possible, and then split. That's the plan. We'll be trespassing, but it's the price we have to pay to get information. Since you took so long to get here, we've got even less time than we're hoping for. Two or three hours should be su sufficient to do some breaking and entering. We're investigating. <laughs> Rosé continues, pay paying no attention at all to Bun's objection. The residence doesn't appear to be ter terribly large, so we shouldn't need to rush things. Well, unless we encounter an irregularity. Regularity? An unexpected circumstance. For example, if we find unexpected security, an underground vault, those sort of things. The types of things that might crop, crop up during a break-in. I see. We are not breaking in. <coughs> Why are you so hung up on the terminology? The action's the same, isn't it? Now, what should we do? Try the front door? We're investigating this mansion. We've already settled on this. Yes, I mean, where should we start first? Gabu, you're the one tangled up in Kakuya's game. You should decide. Alright. I would try the front door, honestly. Let me save. Okay, we're 40 minutes in, so let's do a little bit, a little bit searching. Rusted mailbox. Take a look inside, but there isn't anything in it. <clears throat> pretty, pretty sturdy sliding door. Layer of dust covering the door rail, so I know it hasn't been moved for a while. According to the rumors, they said something like, nobody comes out even if you knock, right? Sure, knocking shouldn't be a problem. I give the door a kind of firm knock. I wait for some kind of response. Nothing? Ugh. Well, no response. Just as we were informed. Judging by the state of this place, Miroku probably isn't living here. 
His body is somewhere in this mansion, probably. There's a strange looking window here. You know, this house is kind of odd looking. Looking closer, the building's funky style isn't even just a Japanese and Western mixed design. Yeah, it's weird. It feels like an Alpine Lodge. Yeah, but built with traditional Japanese style. Exactly! Damn. Must have been a custom job. You don't usually see two-story houses with that roof. Window's probably where the attic is. If so, then that's a pretty big attic. Yeah. If the room under the roof is that big, it looks like it's bigger than the two normal-sized rooms. Is that the window that was mentioned in the rumor? If you throw something, the lights in the second floor window will turn on. Hmm. I guess you would need to throw something at the first floor window, so that must be it. Okay, we can maybe do that later. Let's see, anything else? Bushes? Looks like it hasn't been cared for in a long time. Weeds and dead leaves all over. Okay, that's it for now. Push on the door, but it doesn't budge. Hmm. Do we have a rock on us at all? Is there a rock we can pick up? Oh. <clears throat> Weeds have run wild over this area. Garden hasn't been touched for a while. Use my foot to poke around in the overgrowth. My foot bumps into something solid. I tease the object out into the open and see that it's it's a decayed wooden door plate. What does it say? It's dirty, but it seems to read Miroku. Okay, cool. Can we throw that? Uh, looks like I got it now. Want to throw something over there? Um, even if this hit the window dead on, it probably wouldn't break it. Are you actually going to throw it? Just like the rumor said, if there's something crazy going on, I want to know more about it. Pretty courageous of you. You'll need to cur that courage if you intend to survive the confrontations with spirits. Whatever, just try to not throw it- try not to throw it too hard. I know. I don't want to attract attention, so I don't want to break the window. I take aim and toss the plate, aiming it at the wooden frame of the window. My throw hits its spot- hits the spot and makes a dry thud as it strikes the wood. Nice throw. You got some nice shoulders. Oh, are you into me now? <laughs> the most anticipated draft player this season. Sorry, I don't really know baseball. The rumors say if we throw something at the window, we'll see the lights come on. Or so the rumors claimed. Nothing's happening. We wait a while, but it doesn't seem like the lights are coming on anytime soon. Hmm, I was hoping that I would get to hear the voice from the rumors. Sometimes rumors are just rumors. A good journalist knows not to trust every single one. Let's hurry up and check out the other places. Hmm. What other places, though? We can't go in. There's nothing to pick up. I can try the door again. Pull the door just in case. As anticipated, it doesn't open. Looks like it's locked. Wanna just kick it in? You're already thinking of breaking in? You're too reckless, kid. Damn. What a bold child. I must confess, I do prefer the direct approach sometimes. Feels like the air just changed. Oh, it's on! Please don't look inside. Say one more time. Did you hear something just now? We look in the direction of the voice and see the light in the window that had come on. In the light, we see what looks like the silhouette of a crane. Really? Looks like a person hanging. Nako nasaka naidekasai? Nasaku? Once again, we hear a faint, weak voice. <coughs> Don't look? As if we wouldn't look. We're not going to just back now. go back now, are we? Hey, Gabu, there's definitely something in this mansion. That means that all rules are off. We're breaking in? Exactly. Calm down there, boys. You can't cause too much of a commotion or we'll draw the attention of the police. You got a plan then, Rosé? I'll open the lock for us. It's not like opening a can, you know. You really think you can get it open that easily? This lock may as well not exist. 
You should always have more locks on the front door, but nobody ever bothers. Oh, that's right. You should share this advice with the owner of the black rabbit as well. Oh yeah, the lock there is just as pitiful. That explains it. Now I know how Rosé got into the black rabbit before it opened. You're a real piece of work. Did you just sleep through Morel's class? I regret that I did not get the experience, get to experience things like school during my childhood. Oh damn, what kind of upbringing did you have? Rosé took some tools out and quickly got to work. Kind of reminds me of when Amanome picked the lock at the Yamato shrine. But Rosé's skill were far beyond ours. Oh my god, Seiji and Rosé need to meet. That would be amazing. You seem pretty skilled at this. Makes me wonder if you've been doing this kind of thing in the past. My goodness, how rude. Rosé shoots back a response as she uses her thin tool to probe the lock. <clears throat> Any intelligent magician would obviously have a bit of dexterity. That's true, but... I've heard of magicians using escape magic, but not for breaking into places. Are you curious about my skills? I'm afraid that I must ask you to refrain from any inquiries that would violate my privacy. Et voila, it's open. You're done already? Pretty amazing. I must say it feels quite nice to get some odd admiration from the young. Would you like to be my disciple? What is that supposed to mean? Honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind learning how to lockpick. I wasn't really planning on becoming a magician or a burglar. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind training you for either, but I was referring to the spiritual field. You seem to have an affinity for it, disciple. Oh, I haven't told about the blemmer tree. Hold on, I never agreed to be your disciple. Masters choose their disciples. Your opinion doesn't matter. I was asking out of courtesy. That's terrible. Hey, let's cut the chit chat. We don't have a lot of time. If it's open, let's get inside. We can't let anyone see us like this. We don't have an excuse for being here. Yeah, I know. Oh, we're in! I forcefully pulled the door open, but I thought I felt a cold breeze from inside. Swallowing my saliva, I step into the mansion. Ooh! The Midoku residence looked like an old Japanese-styled house, and the smell of damp, moldy air. Seems like this place hasn't been aired out for a really long time. Wait a moment, Gabu. I sense someone watching us. Be careful. Watching? Nozokanaide. Naka o nozoku. Naka o nozokanaide kudasai. What was it happening immediately? A loud, high pitched, piercing sound rips through my ear. I instantly cover my ears, but the sound above easily pierces through and stabs into my brain. Ban and Rose collapse behind me. Are you kidding me? At this rate, I'll die. I fall, powerless against the storm of sound assaulting my mind. My consciousness is starting to fade. The screaming voice suddenly stops. Should we bring, like, air protection? What was that? Bloody hell, my head is still pounding. I guess that must be the screaming voice people are talking about. If, I, if it went on any longer, my brain would have melted. I barely survived that. Well, we don't know if that's true yet. Remember, in the rumor, Miss Y, who heard the scream, apparently committed suicide. Things are starting to get real. Gabu, don't say you want to run away now, alright? As if. You're the one who's looking pale. Huh. <laughs> you still- If you've still got the wits to sass me like that, you're still in ship shape. Well, if it's planning to take us down, then I suppose we don't need to hold back either. Let's start scar- I mean, investigating. The place doesn't seem to be that big, so let's investigate whatever we see. Yeah, but before we get to that, we'll need someone to be on the lookout. We don't want to be getting surprised by a patrolman. Right. <clears throat> if something looks bad, call me on my cell phone immediately. Understood. Alright, Gabu, choose who will who will investigate with you. The lady, of course. Monday night. Monday night. Well, Bun, you're on lookout duty. Fine by me. See you later, then. Rosé, don't you go off doing anything on your own. Bun leaves and heads outside. Alright, let's get going. And that is a perfect point to see! And cut for the next episode! I hope you guys liked it! 
it's i'm really into this i can't wait to explore this house to see what's going on here this this is way right up my alley i like haunted houses um i can't wait to explore and see you in the next episode while we do that thank you so much for watching bye